We again greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. This morning we are coming from beautiful 1673 Dean Street International Christian Center under the tutelage of Apostle Lucian Rojas. To those watching on Facebook or any means of media this morning, we greet you in our name and in Jesus' mother's name. This morning I have something in store for you. It's direct from our Savior Jesus Christ. And before we go into this morning's service, I want to call upon the other leadership of this house. I did not know first lady, Pastor Kathy Rojas, who is going to lead us in prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning to the saints of God that is in our midst that is here this morning. And good morning to everyone that is looking on online. And have you, hope you have a blessed day today and enjoy the service. Um, I just want to give honor to who honor is due to our apostle that's in the midst, to our pastors and leaders of this fellowship. God bless you and keep you. May his light shine upon you. Father God, this morning we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you are in our midst, and when you are in our midst, you are in our midst to do a good work. So we thank you for the work of God. We thank you for the hands of God upon this ministry, upon the lives of the saints, Lord God, upon the lives of all those that are listening on, all those that are joining with us this morning. May you continue to bless them. May your anointing continue to flow, Lord. May you continue to... Strong. You keep us strong in you, Lord God. You continue to do a work in the lives of the families, oh Lord God, that is listening on this morning, God. We pray, Lord, even in this service, that you will have your way. You will move, you will speak, Lord God. You will use, Lord, the apostle this morning to do a mighty work in our midst. We thank you this morning for the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Continue to strengthen our heart. Continue to keep us. Continue to order our footsteps. Lord, let your blood prevail this morning over the life, O oh Lord God, of the people of God, the saints of God. Let your blood prevail over the line this morning, the online ministry, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Let your word go forth with the anointing and the power of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well said, Pastor Chachi. May God continue to enlarge your course. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, we get ready for our praise and worship session. At this time, I turn it over to know how the pastor Claudia Scott. Will you guys give a round of applause for us who comes this morning, ladies and gentlemen? Praise the Lord. It's worship time. You know, worship time is a good time. Yeah, come on so I'm saying, uh -huh. I mean, the song is said, in Psalm 28, verse 7, it says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. So we want to praise him with song this morning. Amen? So if you're in the building, I'm going to ask you to stand. If you're home, I'm going to ask you to stand.
nothing is impossible. And no matter what happens in our lives, we can trust in the greatness and the goodness of our God. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. Hallelujah. This morning, before you take your seats, I just want to let you know. Don't tell me how big your problem is. Just tell me how great my God is this morning. Don't matter the problem, don't matter the situation. I want you to pay attention. I want you to stay focused now. 
as we embark upon this series on the power of learning. Amen. I am hungry to learn. And when I talk about learning, I'm not just talking about getting a PhD or in the secular. I'm talking about learning uh, life and kingdom principles. Amen. And I want to share that with you. Um, the Apostle Paul talked about the secret of living, understanding life. Amen. And as you grow, you begin to learn and you begin to grow and you begin to earn in life. Amen. These are things that are that are part of our journey and our experience and uh, the process. Amen? Amen? And I really want to thank the Lord. Uh, two days ago, I celebrated a birthday, you know, and I thank God for life. It's precious. It's a gift. We need to enjoy our lives and enjoy the fruits of our labor. You know, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you give in, it can depress you. It can bog you down. It can, you can lose joy. You can leave, lose purpose living. But we thank God for life. Amen? amen? And I thank God, amen, that I feel like I'm in a good place today. I feel like I'm in a good space. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. 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 So I want to continue on the uh, power of uh, learning. The power of learning. And learning is very important. Uh, it's the acquisition of knowledge or skill through experience, uh, through study, through, or being taught. You know, it's a process. It's a process. Um, we learn culture. We learn from environment, uh, by behavioral patterns, by values, by preference. Uh, and so we learn and we grow every single day. If you're not learning, it means it's not natural. If you're not growing, it's not natural. Amen. Uh, just as we grow in the natural, we ought to grow mentally and spiritually. Amen. We ought to grow. And I know at a certain age in life, we, we stop growing physically, but we have to keep on growing mentally and spiritually. Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, and when I became an adult, I put away childish things. There are levels in life. Amen. There are, there are stages. Amen. The, uh, you know, as a child, as a baby, you know, the uh, process is a process. We take steps to, to learn and grow and evolve, and we thank God for that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now, how many of you know that God wants us to learn? And we see throughout the scriptures where it laid the emphasis on learning. And when you come to church this morning and you sit here, you will want to listen in an audible way. A way of learning is auditory, where you hear. And you can learn verbally, where you see. And kinesthetic is like when you do something actually. You know? So some things you have to practice it, you have to do it. And by doing it, you learn by doing it. You learn by participating. You learn by getting involved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, in the book of Psalms, Psalms, the longest chapter in the book of in the Bible is from the book of Psalms. How many you know that? I don't mean to drill you or you know challenge you, but uh, can you tell me what it is? One nineteen. Yay! We got a smart church up in here. Psalms chapter 119 has 176 verses, and it's the longest chapter in the Bible. Amen. See, the shortest chapter also came from the book of Psalms. And I want to give you a word to encourage you this morning. And I don't mean to come here and just drill you and, and, and that kind of thing. But Psalms chapter 117 has the shortest chapter in the Bible, which is two verses. So we got the longest book is the book of Psalms. 
The longest chapter is the book of Psalms. The shortest chapter is from the book of Psalms. And I tell you how I get fell in love with the book of Psalms. As a young man growing up home, you know, my mother, she is about nine years now, she has gone to be with the Lord. And like a rule, every single morning, without missing one morning, I would, I would be awoken by her voice, by her voice, when she would repeat the book of the, the, the Psalms. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. She would go to Psalms, uh, uh, and she would read it out by the prayer. And um, she would be praying and crying every morning. And so I would be lying in my bed, and I would be listening, and I would be hearing her vocally, vocally speak uh, uh, the book of Psalms. And that resonated with me, and it stays with me up to this day. I have probably spoken from the book of Psalms more than any other chapter, uh, book in the Bible. It talks about war, it talks about peace, and it talks about joy, and it talks about sorrow, and it talks about so many things in the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. Probably the most widely used chapter or known chapter is from the book of Psalms, In the Lord is My Shepherd. So it's a very unique book. And in the book of, of, of Psalms, chapter 119, and today I want to lay the foundation because in this series I will teach you on ways in which you can learn. Learning is powerful. Learning to be creative, to be innovative, amen, to be hungry, to learn, it's powerful. When you learn, you add value to yourself. When you learn, you can empower others. And I'm not just talking about theory. I'm not just talking about book sense. I'm talking about learning uh, through life experience. It's really amazing. So, uh, the psalmist David went to God and he says, God, teach me. Teach me. He wanted God to teach him. And, and that's the best person we can learn from, from God. Or from God's word. Are you with me this morning? Are you engaged? Are you following me? Facebook, are you listening to the Apostle Rojas? Amen. Do not reach to an age in life where you say, I'm done learning. No, 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 no. I'll tell you three things you need to do while, while you're alive. You need to keep growing, you need to keep learning, and you need to keep earning. Are you hearing me? You can't stop. You can't stop growing and say, I'm done. You don't want to read, you don't want to learn, you don't want to engage, you don't want to improve, you don't want to develop. You say, I'm done. I'm too old to learn. No, that's a lie from the pit of hell. You ought to keep growing. Why? Because the world is changing. We have to keep involved. The things that worked in the 1960s and 70s, it's not working today. Amen. Amen. We are making things smarter, smaller, more effective. Amen. More consuming less power. We are every day. Technology is breaking through. And so you can't stay at one level. You've got to keep on what? Growing. Are you with me? And sometimes we get lazy mentally and we say, ah. A simple thing like Texas. Huh? We call the grandkids and say, text that one. But I think people are known that we've all, but most people probably know what the text. So in terms of the technology, the older folks, it's like, but I think people are, people are, people are, 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 are catching on. So you, you have to keep on growing. You have, to, you have to keep on growing. You can't stop and say, I have arrived. Or I, I, I plateaued off. I, I leveled off. No. You have to keep growing and learning. Now, you also have to keep learning. People that learn, and, and, and learning, watch me, learning takes time. You know some of the things, I wish I had done a computer course. <laughs> you, you can't get away from the computer, it's a part of our life. It's a part of our life today. And I wish I had taken a course in computer to learn the nuances, the ins and outs. 
This is how it's supposed to be. Because I use it all the time. Hallelujah. And now I'm saying, even though I, 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 I celebrated the birthday two days ago, I am still hungry to learn. But it takes time for me to learn something. Power. So sometimes what we do, we, we read or we take a course or we learn and we cut down the time that is spent. Because time is money. Time is the new currency. Somebody could write their life biography of three to four decades, put it in a book, and you can take three hours and read it. And you can learn what works and what doesn't work. You can look at their journey and see how they became successful. That's by reading. Um, that's one way of learning. So what I'm saying is, instead of spending all that time, that's why we need teachers. We need teachers, and we had a conversation yesterday at the table when we were fellowshipping yesterday, and somebody was saying teachers are underpaid. Because they got to deal with so much, amen, with dealing with the children. And sometimes kids can be a handful coming from broken homes or dysfunctional homes, you know, undisciplined. And that's what they, that's what they learn. We learn, we pick up from environment. And so they bring that to school, and you have to deal with these students uh, with different personality and and, 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 and and different stuff like that. And so, so, so learning, you have to prepare to teach them, and, and you have to love to do that. It's not just for the salary. Because you can come and say, I don't care about these kids. You could be whatever you want. I'm going to just collect a paycheck. Teaching is a very powerful thing. And there was a big debate whether the school should be closed or whether they should have online uh, learning. And, and that is really up for debate because uh, some say they need to come out. Uh, they need to be in the schools because the, 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 the Macron and the COVID has taken out so much because if you have people that are not learning, we're going to die. We're not going to evolve. We're not going to grow. Why do you think all these are, are, are new, innovative things that happen? Somebody learned. Somebody spent hours burning the midnight oil to find a cure for polio or to find a vaccine, or to, or to learn how we could fly. We sit in a plane now, and we travel 35,000 feet in the air. Somebody, amen, went out there and tried to cross the Atlantic. Do you know how many people died and sacrificed their lives? Now we sit in a plane, and we just go to sleep, read a, read a, read a, read a book, watch a movie, and we get over the Atlantic. So people that have gone before us spent time to be creative and innovative, and that's by learning. So learning is so, so powerful, and our learning the things of God is very important. So we need to grow, we need to learn, and we need to earn. Once you are an adult, what, 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 what age are you adult here? It's like 18 years? After that, junior, you're supposed to be taking care of you. Now, some folks want to stop in their mother's house uh, for all their lives and not evolve. And I'm not saying you, you have to run out, you know what I mean? It, it's kind of convenient, too, because uh, uh, rent is very high. <laughs> but, 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 but if you're going to be living at 18, at some point in time, it's going to cost you. You, you. you can't reach to a stage where you say, I'm done earning. Because once you're living... It's going to cost you. Look, look, I'm taking a time. I didn't even get to the, to the, to the, to the real message yet. But, but you've got to keep learning. Because you can say, well, I, I have everything. I, I stopped earning. So that's it for me. What once do you eat? And as a matter of fact, with inflation, the grocery price of the groceries are higher now. So... Once you're alive, you've got to, now I'm responsible to feed you at a certain age, but then when you reach a certain age, you have, you can see you, 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 you stop eating. What about clothes? You, you, you stop wearing? What about utilities? You said the rent is included, but you still got to pay a rent. It's either you pay a rent or a mortgage. So what I'm saying is, in, in this country, in America, you, you, no matter what, you have you have to be paying something. You're going to pay something at the end of the summer. 
Do you have a cell phone? Unless somebody paid for you. <laughs> and, and, and how long do you carry? Pay for your food, pay for your clothes, pay for Do you have a car? You're going to have to pay insurance, you're going to have to pay gas. So once you're living, that's why it's important to, for people to make preparation early in life so that later in life they have a nest egg and they have something to live on. And that's biblical. That's, that's scriptural. That's, that's principle. Amen. Because nobody's going to carry you forever. At some point in time, you've got to branch out on your own. Your own husband, your own wife, your own children. That is life. So I'm saying, hear me, hear me, hear me. Once you're here on planet Earth, you need to grow, you need to earn, you need to learn. These things don't stop. Because your bills will not stop coming. Life will not stop evolving. You have to grow, you have to learn, and you have to earn. Amen. So we have to be constantly learning, and we need teachers. I think the word mentor is underrated. We need somebody in our life who could speak into our life. Somebody who could bring guidance. Somebody that can bring counsel. Somebody that can impart wisdom. Somebody that can teach us. We need that. All of us. Amen. So, so teaching is important. And, and, and the other thing in teaching, one must be willing to have what we call a teachable spirit. Hallelujah. What kind of spirit? I'm talking about a powerful A teachable spirit. So, and what I found out is that people don't take correction too well. I find it kind of quiet on me this morning. And, and if you want to see how mature and how deep somebody is, bring correction. Now, 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 hear me, hear me, hear me. I'm not saying to put somebody down, always finding fault and being negative. That's different. There's something called positive criticism or constructive criticism. It helps you to get better. If you're really serious about growing, you will take correction if you really want to be better. If you have a desire, if you're hungry and you really want to grow, you'll say, teacher, teach me. Don't teach my neighbor. Don't teach this one because sometimes... We know all who need to be taught except ourselves. That's why we need to take the beam that is in our eyes so we can see clearly in others. It starts with you. It starts with me. And so the very set chapter that I talked to you about, Psalms 119, repeatedly, 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 and I want you to show you these verses one after the other. Quickly get to the book of Psalms chapter 119. And, and every time David... Speak to, spoke to the Lord, he said, teach me. Teach me. Teach me. Teach me. I think about ten times in that chapter, he says, teach me. Teach me. Can I just show it to you from the word of God? Psalms chapter 119, and I want us to look at these verses. And I want you to watch it. The word teach me. Do you see that? Bless art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. One verse said, teach me thy ways. So that's 12. And I'm going to run it too quickly. The next one is 26. I have declared my ways, and thou hearest, teach me. Teach me. Verse 33. He teach me, O oh Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. So he said, Lord, teach. Now, now you think he would say it one time, and, 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 and that's it. But, but rarely does the Bible repeat itself. It, it, it doesn't waste words. It's there for a reason. Teach me. Teach me. And, and, and if you are taught and you're good at what you do, you become a demand. And people will pay you to do what you do if you do it well. Are you with me? There's something called supply and demand. If you are in supply, if you are in demand, if you are in demand, 
then, then there is a need for you, your skills, your giftedness, your ability. If you know what you're doing, if you're good at what you do. You know, for some reason yesterday I went into a car dealership and I was shocked to see the prices of used cars. Why? Because there is a shortage. So what happened to demand? Demand goes up and supply goes down. When demand goes up and supply goes down, the price is higher. There is something called in season or peak season. Even in flying, in peak season, the price is higher. Off peak, the prices are lower. Supply and demand. In the summertime, when they have a lot of uh, watermelon or whatever, the price is cheap. In the winter time, the price are more expensive. So if you are in demand, if you are uh, uh, separate yourself from the pack, if you purpose in your heart to be good at what you do, you never stop learning. You want to grow, you want to excel. You, you, you didn't stop at an associate. You went for your bachelor, you went for your master, you went for your PhD. You keep growing, you keep learning. You will get more money. Hallelujah. Are you with me? <coughs> so, so, so he's saying, teach me. Let, 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 let's move on quickly. Uh, what, what is the verse? 64. And I, I suggest stop there. I think you get the gist, but I just wanted to show you. The, the earth, O oh Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me. Verse 66. Then verse 68. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. Teach me. Teach me. Verse 68. Look, look at it again. Thou art good. Thou art good. Teach me. You, you get the trip. I can give you another verse. It was 108. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offering of my mouth. O Lord, teach me. Teach me thy judgment. Verse 124, teach me. Verse 135, teach me. Why does it repeat that so many times? Because teaching is critical. Deal with thy servant. Teach me. I'm thy servant. Give me understanding. Teach me. Teach me. Teach me. So what I'm saying is, we just don't want hype. When you come on Sunday morning and I stand here, I'm giving you scriptures and I'm teaching you principles. Now, it, ne it never said preach to me. It says teach me. In Matthew 28, let's bring up that verse, 28, 19, and 20. Jesus didn't say go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said go into all the world and teach the gospel. You see, preaching is not, I'm not against it. I'm a preacher. I've been preaching for four decades. But I, when I was young, I, I was I was a firebrand. I'm not I'm 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 I'm, I'm still I'm still you know. But I'm saying, I thought the more I scream, the more I run, the more I jump, the more I move, the message was more impactful. But I realized how powerful words are. Not just their emotion, but substance. So you want something to come into your spirit, and when you leave church, you leave a better person than you came. You leave with something to keep you for the week. You leave with substance. I you understand what I'm saying? But that might sound sometimes boring. People, people like drama, they like charisma, they like these things. But teaching is powerful. So in Matthew 28, it says what? Go ye therefore and do what? Teach all nations. He didn't say preach to all nations. He said teach to all nations. I'm not saying preaching is wrong. But what I'm saying, teaching is more powerful. You got this? Going to all, going there for and teach what? All nations. So for me now, it's important for me to study, to show myself approved. It's important for me to study that when I come before you, I can deliver something. Amen. And let's go to verse 20. It says what? Teaching them. Teaching them to observe all things. Amen. So even Jesus, while he was leaving, his last words, some of you remember the last words somebody said, or the last experience you have with them. He's saying to his disciples, I conclude, 28 chapters in the book of Matthew, the last two verses, 
go and teach. Hallelujah. There are some ministries today, and I'm, I, I preach what I preach. I don't have to criticize nobody. People feel you have to criticize the world to, to make yourself look good. But what I'm saying is, in my 40 years of preaching, I have seen so many, I would use a strong word, circus, and there is no foundation, there is no substance, there is no teaching, and people get excited, and they love that. So they love uh, pandemonium, chaos, somebody falling down, and I'm not saying nothing wrong, you can just say the spirit, don't get me wrong, uh, uh, somebody giving a prophetic word, somebody giving this, somebody, and, and people are, they like the hype. They love that kind of a thing. If you tell them how to live a godly life, how to follow godly principles, how to say, Lord, teach me thy path, teach me thy statutes, teach me thy truth, uh, how to grow, how to understand the secret of living. So some people, that's boring. And half of these things is just a show. I know we entertainment oriented, we like a show. But Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives and he taught the Beatitudes. He taught the people out of the ship. He taught the word of God. So I want this church to be a church where we are hungry for learning. The things of God. The truths of God. The principles of God. Amen. Amen. So teaching is very important. Look, one of the things the disciples came to him and says, We see how you operate. We see how you fool. Can you teach us Luke 11 and chapter 1? Teach us how to. Teach us how to. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he stopped, when he ceased, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, Lord, remember they were trying to try to cast out the devil and they couldn't? When Jesus prayed, he raised the dead to life when Jesus prayed. He healed the sick when Jesus prayed. Miracles happened. And one time they tried to cast out the demon and they couldn't. And Jesus said, these things come at night but by prayer and fasting. And they came to the Lord because they realized the result matter, productivity matter, manifestation matter. And what they said, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. As John taught his disciples, we are willing to learn. We are willing to grow. We want to develop. We want to excel. We want to take it to the next level, to the next dimension. Teach me. Master. Hallelujah. We want to pray like you. We want results like you. We want to model you. We want to fashion after you. We want to learn from you. Teach us. Hallelujah. Now learning, we must always increase. Increase in learning. Hallelujah. Increase not. I have seen where ordinary, simple people who are broke, hear me, broke, and decided to learn a skill, spend hours in the night when folks were partying, when folks were doing things, and they learned. And today, they are making six figures, seven figures, because they learned a skill. You know, I'm in the, in the investment field where I learned, it's not even two years ago, and I, I, I say this to make a point, not to, not to, not to put this on you. 
because everybody have different uh, passion or things that they do differently. And that would make us unique. There's strength and diversity. Some people feel be, 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 because you're something different than what I do, you're wrong. Not because I'm different, I'm wrong. Everybody can be the same way, or do the same thing, or have the same passion. You understand that? That's what makes the world unique. There's strength and diversity. Are you understand what I'm saying? Everybody has a different style. Amen. No, nobody teaches the same or preaches the same way. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? So I was saying like two years ago, I started learning. Learning how to invest. And um, it's an experience and a journey. And it's, it's an amazing thing what knowledge can do to someone. If you are willing to learn. And in retrospect, I'm saying, gosh, why did I not learn this 10 years ago? I would have been a millionaire already. I'm speaking the truth. Knowledge is power. My people are destroyed for a lack of what? Knowledge. Hallelujah. Let's look at Proverbs. And I'm going to teach you the ways we can learn. Not today. I'm going to do that probably next week. But I just want to lay the foundation of learning and teaching, how it can benefit you so wonderfully. And, and, and mind you, and mind you, there are people out there that have done things that, that benefit the entire world by being creative and innovative and learning. Things that we take for granted. Because somebody went out there and they paid a price and they did it. And the whole world um, benefit from it. Some of these people, they are not spiritual to see they in church or born again. But in a sense, your, your career is a calling. I have so much respect for medical doctors. What they will do when you, when you, when you, when, when they have to take out a tumor from you. They learn that. They spent six, seven years to do what they're doing. Hallelujah. Or to find a cure for a disease, or to create an intervention that we all... How many of you all enjoy GPS? I think I mentioned that just recently. GPS. Global Position Satellite. We would use, I, I think I, I don't want to repeat myself, did I say that last week, I talked about that last week? Yes. When you're on Big Atlas and you have to pull aside and look where you're going. And now the GPS, it's almost on every phone and every car, we take it for granted. I went to Pastor Brown House for the first time yesterday. One, two, three, no problem. <laughs> follow the GPS, follow the cloud, follow the fire. <laughs> Somebody invented that. And I am grateful. Somebody spent time to invest and to explore and to put a satellite in space. And we drive, and we go to Florida, we go to the house number, the exact street, and it's so common that we take it for granted. But somebody learned that skill, and you and I have benefited from it. Amen. Now, Look at Prabhu chapter 1. Again, I'm going to show you like four verses where it, it, it talks about increasing learning. It says a wise man will, what? will do what? A wise man do what? Will hear. And he will do what? Increase learning. Increase learning. And a, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise comes. So he'll increase learning. Look, look at verse 9 and 9. 9 and 9. Chapter 9 and verse 9, yeah. Give instruction to who? How many know instruction is important? 
How many of you ever went to the store? Listen to me. How many of you went to the store? You buy a product and you say, I don't need no instruction and you try to put it together. And then you have to break it back down and go back to the instruction. Because you put A before B and you put B before A and you put the screw that was wrong. Instruction is important. This book is a book of instruction. In the book of Proverbs, I read in the book of Psalm, there are so much nuggets about living. So in 9 it says, give instruction, give instruction, give instruction, give instruction to a wise man, not a foolish man, a wise man, and he will yet be wiser. Teach. What do you do? Teach. Teach a just man. He will increase learning. I challenge you today to get better at what you do. Don't settle for mediocrity. Don't settle for average. Be the best that you can be. Don't stop learning. Don't stop growing. Don't stop earning. Hallelujah. Proverbs 16, 21. The wise in heart shall be called prudent. The wise in heart shall be called what? And the sweetness of his lips increase. Nowhere does it say decrease learning. It said what? Increase learning. Verse 23. The heart of the wise teacher his mouth. And I have learning. Either you add learning, you increase learning, you grow, you develop, you get better, you learn. Hallelujah. So, I think I'm going to, what's the time? How long have I been preaching? You only give a, how much more minutes you want? Tell me how much more minutes you want. You, 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 you enjoying it? Yes, amen. Yes. Or you, or you, you rather be doing cartwheels or? Hallelujah. <laughs> well, do you have an appetite for that? Yes, People have different appetites. Some like onions, some like garlic. It doesn't mean that one is wrong. It's just what you like. So, one of the first ways we can learn, and I should leave that for the second part, but, but, but let me touch on it, is um, through experience. Through what? Experience. Alright, let me ask you a question. You don't have to answer. Have you experienced anything in life? Relationship, pain, disappointment. What have you experienced? Joy, children, work, friends. What's your experience? And don't tell me you won't learn from it. We learn by dealing with people. If I met you for the first time, because of our interaction, I begin to develop some things about you. Whether you are talkative or whether you're quiet. Whether you're introvert, extrovert. Whether you're stingy or whether you're giving. Whether you're sloppy or whether you're neat. It's not long before you begin to, not in a judgmental way, you begin to identify a person. Whether that person tells the truth, or they lie. Whether the person is dramatic, or whether the person, whether you, you, they're believable or they're not believable. You, you begin to make an assessment because people will tell you who they are. And, 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 and you will forget what people say, but you will not forget how they make you feel. That's your experience. Hallelujah. Am I teaching right? Now, 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 hear what Job says. Job 32 and 7. And, and normally I would stop, but I feel like, I feel like going on this morning. Amen. This is powerful. I said, 
Watch this. I said, these should do what speak. And multitudes of years should teach wisdom. Days. Somebody say if you give it time. People will show you who they are. Oh, we can fake it and we can win the dress and we can pretend, but at the end of the day, who we are is who we are. And days. You ever hear the same time will tell? Yeah. Or oh, they say, give it time. Time is a powerful ingredient. If you give it time and you don't rush the process, it will reveal what it truly is. Days will speak. The first time, the first you, the first in, 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 in the inception, you're trying to, you're trying to assess. You're not sure. But if you, if after a while, if you, if you give it time, this will speak. And yes, we'll teach. How many of you look smarter than you was 10 years ago? Amen. 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 The psalmist said in 1912, teach me to number my deeds so that I may apply my heart to wisdom. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here who wanted to learn? Yes, sir. Not, 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 not get your hands, because some people want, want to hear what they want to hear, but there's, there's a difference from what you need to hear. Some people feel good if you tell them all the nice things about them. I, I, I mean, if you like a compliment, don't get me wrong. But, 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 but even though it's a lie, you feel good for a moment. But sometimes the truth hurts. But we ought to speak the truth in love. So when somebody err or stray, which we all do, when there's a time for correction, somehow we have a hard time dealing with it. We make an excuse, we quit to put up a wall because you are you are you are messing with my ego and how dare you. But if you really want to grow, you will love to get instruction because it will help you. I spoke the other day about light and darkness. If the blind leads the blind, they will both fall in the ditch. The Bible said that they shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you one. You know, David and Mr. A man after God's own heart. He did wrong. How could a man after God's own heart do?
do something wrong. Let me be honest with you. Is there any, you don't have to confess right now, between you and God, I've done, ever done anything wrong? You was, years ago, you were something else. Thank God you can see. Hallelujah. In other words, we learn our ways and we learn from our failures and mistakes. But, 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 but David, David messed up. And he, he sinned. He went with, oh, it's so graphic. He went with another man's wife. It's in the Bible, I'm sorry. And then to cover up, he put the guy in front of the battle so that he can get killed. Wow! No! This man write the book of Psalms? I'm going to go into that next week. There's too much for me to cover right now. The experience between Nathan the prophet and David. Hallelujah. I mean, you've got it good. Hallelujah. And so for me now, I want to teach young men and young women. What I know, I want to pass it on. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with this verse. 2 Timothy 2. Two. The things which thou hast heard, you learn one way of learning is auditory or audio. Faith come by what? If all the auditory, there is visual. You observe, you see. I saw what my father went through. Mm -mm. I saw what the neighbor went through. Mm -mm. You learn by seeing. You learn by hearing. And you learn by doing. You could read about riding a bike. You could see someone ride a bike. That's what we call kinesthetic learning. But unless you get on there, Feel the feeling and actually do it. You will not look. That's practical. So the things which thou hast heard. That's why when a child grew up in a house where the mother and father is cussing and fighting, that child grew up with those tendencies. We draw from our society. Even if you go to the church, you draw from the culture of the church. Every church has a culture. Every home has a culture. Every community has a culture. Every state has a culture. We, we turn them by red state and blue state. So the very same thing that you heard among many witnesses, the same you must commit to faithful men now, some people, if they don't want to learn, you can't force them to. There must be a desire or a willingness. As a matter of fact, if you're forcing it down, they will get offensive and they'll get, they'll, they will get angry. They have to want to. Have you ever seen you trying to teach somebody something? You're trying to tell them this part is dangerous. Don't go there. It's not good. I'm telling you. I'm wiser. I'm experienced. I've been there, done that. It's going to hurt you. It's going to cause problems. And they, all of a sudden, they get irate. And there are times when you're going to back off. Hallelujah. So in all, there must be a sense of willingness. I want to be better. I want to grow. I want to be established. I want to be good at what I'm doing. 
So you commit to what? Faithful man. Faithful woman. Who shall be able to teach others also? That is a powerful truth and it is a powerful principle. Hallelujah. What you have learned, don't hold your knowledge or hide your knowledge, but teach others. It's a powerful cycle. It's a powerful principle. And, and do you know, Jose, do you know the children of the world that said they are wiser than the children of life? They are constantly passing on. Well, it's about when I started, uh, I started Sunday in 1995, closing in 1995, and that was 22 years ago. No, 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 sorry. Help me out. 95, 27. You cannot hold me very much. 27. And when I came on the job in 95, people were retiring while they were hiring. Are you trying to say? And they taught me for two weeks how to drive the truck, how to operate the, the hop or the handle, how to understand every, how to understand hazard material, how to understand certain things and so forth and so forth, even to pick up trash. And they had a new batch. And while we were coming in, that same year, some were retired. But who likes to see trash in front of their house? Or who like when there's snow, you can't get out? So they teach us how to put on a plow and how to plow the streets of New York when there's a snowstorm. But understand this, that now, 27 years ago, I'm not there no more. But there are new people. So while some are retiring, some are coming in. So those that are there always have to keep teaching when they retire. Those that are taught, they pass it on. Those that are taught, they pass it It's generational. New people, new batch. It happens in every department, the police department, in nurses, school teachers. When you retire, somebody will take over. What you have learned you have to commit to other faithful people that they will teach others also. So when you teach your son, your son teaches son, and it's a generational thing. Because we always have to keep learning because the world is evolving and changing, and we have to be abreast of the time. Hallelujah. So teach me, Lord, thy path, thy truth, thy statutes, thy commandments, Thy ways that I may grow. Amen. And we'll stand in the house of the Lord. I think that's enough. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Teach me how to pray. Hallelujah. Teach me. Thy ways, teach me thy statutes, teach me thy commandment, teach me thy plain path, teach me thy truth. Oh, glory to God, teach me, Lord. Teach me and I will follow, teach me and I will grow, teach me and I will excel, teach me and I will have an impact, teach me and I will be influential, teach me, oh God, in the name of, and I will inspire, teach me, Lord, and I will edify, teach me, Lord, and I will uplift, teach me, Lord, and I will empower, teach me, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. I want to say a prayer with you today right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today for your word. I pray you will stir up 
challenge, O oh God, stretch that we may have a hunger to learn, a desire to grow, a passion to earn. The secret of living but I'm willing to be taught. Master, teach me. In the name of Jesus. Teach me, O God, the, the principles of the kingdom that I may know how to love and how to give, that I may learn how to serve. That I may learn. Glory to God. Teach me. Lead me. Feed me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you put your hands together for the Lord?
what you do. In, um, you still came out in spite of the fear of the virus and whatever. We are in the house of the Lord, and we thank God. Uh, those that uh, are not able to come out, you can get it online. So it's a beautiful thing. Uh, we keep loving away, and we trust God, amen, that things will pick up. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. God is good, and God is good all the time. Pastor Kathy is going to come, and she's going to make announcements before we wrap things up. Amen. amen. Before we go, you know, I just wanted to make an announcement from the 23rd to the 30th. We want to get into a time of corporate prayer and fasting, when we come before the Lord in prayer and fasting. And the Lord has laid in my spirit, you know, that as David has said, I will not give of the Lord that which cost me nothing. And we want to really come before God in a time where we can come in agreement on the line for at least three days, where we can come on the line as a body and come and pray. We can be we, coming online on the 24th, 25th, and the 26th. You know, if you can make a sacrifice, we're going to give God something. We're going to give Him some of our time. It's just one hour every evening for three days. If we can do it as a body, a time where we come together for prayer, to call upon, you know, God for our family, especially for our family, our unsaved loved ones. We come in as one body, one voice, to call on God for this time. And according to Philippians 4 and 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, be careful for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we come in to give God thanks. He crosses us over into another year. With thanksgiving, let your request, whatever request we come in with, in thanksgiving before God. Let it be made known to God, but only He can bring that change. The change we're looking for in this time and season, it can only come from God. So I encourage you as a people, let us come. Let us give God praise. Let us bring our request before Him, but He alone can change. Amen. And I want it to be intense, and listen to me, I want everybody, this is a new year, one hour, for three nights, some people are doing a month, some people are doing 40 days. I should see, let's wake up. Try your best. Try your best. We can't force nobody to do anything. Try your best to come on. And let's spend one hour for three days with intense prayer. Amen? We're going to set out the flyers for as much people as we can, and let's pray. And we, we, we should accompany that with fasting. Oh, we are fasting, yes. This prayer fasting. Passing from the 23rd to the 30th, which is a week from Sunday to Sunday. Amen. From Sunday to Sunday, from the 23rd to the 30th. That's a full week of full prayer week. fasting. So we come on three nights. We're coming on three nights. And, and you know, fasting, the benefits of fasting, it will do your body good. Understand if you have meditation, you take a medication or whatever that's different. The fasting gives the body a rest. It's always healthy to fast. We lose a couple of Pounds. There are spiritual benefits and physical benefits if we can do that. Most people are doing it at the beginning of the month. So let's keep the chain going. At the end of the month, we're doing this. And I want everybody to come home as we fast and pray. We'll give you some instructions for that. Amen. Whether it's fruits, whether it's just water. I remember I fasted without nothing. I was young and very zealous. I went 10 days without any water. At my age now, that would not be wise for me to do that. Fasting really is abstinence. You could abstain from TV, you could abstain from Facebook. It's all about abstaining. It's all about starving the flesh and feeding the spirit. And if we want to see something happen in our lives, we cannot be average and mediocre. We want to excel, we want to learn, we want to grow. So we, we gotta we gotta pay the price. We, like Pastor Kathy said, I want to give nothing to the Lord that doesn't cost me. Let's take that week. We're giving you enough time. Amen. Amen. To to, to take that week and have it intense. And we want to see the results after. Amen? Amen. 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 Don't don't be nonchalant and come on one night and, and, and then you'll fast for one day and let it be corporate. Are you with me? Leaders? Amen. If you take a medication, it doesn't mean you have to stay 24 hours without eating or drinking. But you could abstain. Spend more time in the word, spend more time in prayer, spend more time in abstaining from the things you like, and abstain from sugar, abstain from whatever. 
and that will help us as a body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. And nobody is going to be asking you what you eat or what you drink today. It's between you and God. But we do it corporately. Let's make the effort and the sacrifice. Amen, Pastor Kai? Amen. You agree with me? We together? All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you, man. I love you guys. And I appreciate you guys. Amen. Oh, Brother Willie, you, you're so sweet, Brother Willie. <laughs> I mean, you just lost my hand. I have all you forget about the birthday. He, just, <laughs> he, you know, thank you, Brother Willie. God bless you, man. Do we thank God for this, brother? Yeah. You know, he came to the body. He said, Apostle, there's a leak in the church. He said, tomorrow I'm coming. I'm going on the roof, and I'm going to clear it up. And I'm like, be careful. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to get this stuff. He loved the church. He loved the people. And I can't say nothing more to this brother, man. God, I love you, man. I, I genuinely mean that, man. You are right. We got good people in ICC. Amen? Amen. This corona, man, has really put a hurt in. Are, you, are we online still or no? Online. You still online? Yeah. Okay, that's all right. And, and, and some churches are closed right now. Some churches, some pastors are really discouraged. I'm serious. I have talked with pastors. They, they want to quit. They want to give up. This, and you see, the corona is not just you're going to get sick. What it does... To, to, to in school learning, what it does to the economy, what it does to, to inflation, what it does to things that are shortages of things. It's really put a damper, and we have to rise above it and be strong. And we have to come through this together as a people. Amen? Yeah. And we're going to do this. And we're going to see revival in ICC. Amen? Yeah. Don't be wary in well doing. Don't get wary in what you're doing. Amen? Jeffrey, yeah. don't get wary. Please don't. Don't. We can't yeah. afford to be wary. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because some of you do something over and over. So what's the result? What's the, what's the use? What's the point? You've got to stick with it. In the end, God will not fail us. Amen? God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much.